Hello everyone, this is Jack Rambling Raconteur. Uh, hope, hope everyone's safe and well. Um, it is Tuesday, Tag Tuesday. The schools are closed here in Arizona. And so I'm doing the finance book tag. The original tag is from David Murphy. I'll link his channel below. And then I was tagged, I was fortunate enough to be tagged by a booktube hero on the Mount Rushmore booktube, Steve Donahue. Thank you, Steve. So these are, uh, these are some fun questions. My, my college mathematics course finished up its financial mathematics unit. Uh, so this was making equations jump to mind as I was working on it. But prompt one, diversification is the averaging out of independent risks in an at-large portfolio. Pull up a few books we wouldn't expect to see on your shelves. That's hard because I, I try to read from quite a few genres, but um, a horror book that is somewhat uh, a more modern um, type of Lovecraftian, H.P. Lovecraftian uh, story would be The Red Church by Scott Nicholson. It's a pretty slim volume. Um, a very slim mystery. Uh, Charles, Charles Williford's Burnt Orange Heresy which is not only a mystery, but also a send-up of like art criticism <laughs> set in Miami. And then this is a fun one. So this is a set of fairy tales, Bavarian fairy tales, where this guy just went out in the 1800s, 1850s, um, and just Franz Zaver uh, von Schonworth just went around um, and collected bizarre fairy tales and like from regular people not you know he he didn't edit and redact them he really just went out and tried to find what there was in every little village in uh, bavaria and so i read this and th these are really fascinating there are different takes on like cinderella there are some just very funny fairy tales and very like scary fairy tales as well the there's a little mermaid version in there and they're just really interesting um tales Prompt two, past results are not indicative of future outcomes. Tell us about a book or author you disliked or were indifferent about on a first read, but gave a second chance to and ended up liking. I read The Sorrows of Young Werther, and then I tried to read Elective Affinities, and I thought that Gerth was one of the most overrated authors of all time. I had read Faust Part One, and I, I thought it was good. I read those novels, and I thought they were atrocious. Um, I later read Faust Part Two. I have a, the Everyman's Library version that has his Italian um, journey or Italian travels, and it has some of his poetry. And I, I would say his novels still not a fan. But as a writer overall, I was really glad I finally ended up reading Faust Part Two. I was glad I ended up reading um, his poetry and particularly his travel writings. I read those before my wife and I went to Italy. I found them fascinating. I thought he was very funny, um, particularly one where he thinks it's cool to sketch like the walls and battlements of an Italian like fortress and they're convinced he's a German spy and he's trying to no no I'm just I'm overcome with how, how beautiful it is and I just want to draw it that made me laugh pretty hard prompt three the effect of earning interest on interest is known as compound interest and again that equation like that exponential function flashed through my mind uh, name a book that has aged remarkably well or a book that gets better each time you reread it um, not so much a single volume, but, uh, the poems of Percy Shelley. Uh, this is a great romantics anthology that has Byron Sheets, uh, Shelley and Keats. And I love, uh, Shelley's poetry. I reread it at least every year. Um, I read from his poems, uh, or even, uh, the essay Defense of Poetry. And I, I just love it. He, his, his humanity, his sensibility, his passion, his, Fear, it, it, it's all out there on the page. And I, I just really enjoyed his poetry. Um, prompt four, this is probably the longest prompt. A firm's current ratio is the ratio of current assets to current liabilities. So a ratio of one would mean that your current assets equal your current liabilities. If current assets are the books in your library that you have read and current liabilities are the books you have not read in your library, is your current ratio above, below, or equal to one? So it would be above one if you've read more books in your library than you have not read. It would be equal if you've read exactly half of the books in your library, and it would be less than one if you've read fewer than half of the books in your library. Uh, mine's below one. It's somewhere between 0.3 and 0.5. I didn't do an exact calculation, but I can estimate. Uh, when we move, I have to move this library. And Thankfully, we haven't had to move for almost five years now, so <laughs> I've added to the library. 
Prompt five, familiarity bias is the tendency of investors to favor investments in companies they are familiar with. What is a book you go back to out of familiarity? And it's not so much familiarity with this one. It is very much familiarity. I love The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, the beautiful Art Deco cover. I know the plot. I just love his writing. I, I love the way he describes people's behaviors, uh, the dialogue. It's just so fun. And then the other one is uh, Jorge Luis Borges collected fictions, his short stories. There are so many of them that I've read that I am just fascinated by and I love to return to them. I love knowing the ending, being able to start at the beginning and, and reading through and seeing how he's toying and he creates his little labyrinths, his mazes. He has this, the, um, the Library of Babel is a fascinating one. Garden of Forking Paths is very famous. Um, Tlan, Ukbar, I'm trying to think of the third one. That's a really fun one. Uh, where it, it just sort of deals with the idea of memory, the idea of hu the human mind and how we remember history and some of those types of things. But he has one about um, that you ultimately find out is from the perspective of one of the monsters of the Greek myths. I won't say which one. And it's just, it's fantastic. It's like two pages long and it's just fantastic. So I love his stories. I, I return to them all the time. Prompt six, investors are always seeking alpha. Seeking a non-zero expected difference between a stock's, uh, sorry, seeking a non-zero difference between a stock's expected return and its required return. What is an underrated book or a book that should be more well known but isn't? I don't know how underrated it is, but I don't know that I've run into too many people who've read it. That would be this City of Dark Magic by Magnus Flight, which deals with like a um, uh, a, a character in Prague. Who can see like um, characters like from the past? Um, she's really focused on Beethoven. There's some references to Tycho Brahe, and it's just a fantastic read. It's so weird and so fun. Um, a, the prompt seven: A derivative is a security, the payoff of which depends solely on the prices of other marketed assets. Tell us about a book you thought was derivative. Well, in I don't want to like go too much into it. I'm not a huge fan of Philip Ross writing, I think. I like Saul Bellow, and I don't really like Philip Roth. I just, he doesn't seem to be having fun very often. Um, but one that's derivative and intentionally so would be George MacDonald Fraser's Royal Flash, which is an absolute send-up of Anthony Hope's The Prisoner of Zenda. And swashbuckling, you know, very, very fun little book. Um, Prompt eight, a uh, share repurchase is when a company uses cash to buy back its own stock. Tell us about a book you have too many copies of. So I have a, an anthology of D.H. Lawrence that has sections from the rainbow. I used to, I have a paperback of it that like is starting to fall apart. And so I found a hardcover copy of the rainbow um, for like $5 and it was a good, yeah, $5 and it was a really good copy. And I know my paperback copy is going to fall apart the next time I try to read it. Um, and, I've, and I am willing to like use wood glue and scotch tape to repair books. But when I saw this, I thought, okay, this will, this will last more than one more reread. So that's the one I, I own too many copies of. And finally, a uh, question, our uh, prompt nine, the federal reserve is the end as uh, the lender of last resorts. What is a book your mom or dad bought for you? Um, when I was a freshman in college for Christmas, I had asked for a couple of books from my mother and she ended up from that list grabbing Umberto Eco's Name of the Rose and Petronius's Satyricon. So it was a very interesting uh, winter break of reading. Thank you, of course, Mom, if you happen to watch this. And then finally, Prompt 10, Tag. Uh, I don't know how busy he is with his move, but I'm guessing that if he bought a house recently, Noah and everyone who reads it must converse might have, have you know some interest in finance. And then I was recently subscribed to by the Book Eclectic, who uh, is, is all in on the Marsathon. So I'd love to hear her thoughts as well. And I'll be back sometime this week, maybe tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.